Oh, of course. <laughs> expected unexpected guest joining us representing the North Carolina student athletes Theo Pinson of course the king of all news conferences is here at this time ladies and gentlemen we'd like to welcome in the head coach of the national champions Roy Williams as well as Tar Heel student athletes Joel Berry II Isaiah Hicks and of course Theo Pinson We'd like to welcome at this time the board president of the NABC and the head coach of Old Dominion, Jeff Jones. Coach Jones will tell us a little bit about the NABC NCAA Coaches Trophy and officially present to North Carolina. I don't get that, no. Oh, I was about to say. On behalf of the uh, NABC, uh, it's my pleasure uh, to present the NCAA NABC 2017 National Championship Trophy to Coach Roy Williams and the North Carolina Tar Heels. Yes, yes, Congratulations. Wow. I lost a lot of games to Jeff when I was an assistant in North Carolina. It's the nicest thing he's ever done for me. <laughs> That's enough. We can get one right at the end. Before we begin with questions for the student athletes, we'll ask Coach Williams to give us an opening statement. Coach. A crazy thing is I looked up at the score while we were all celebrating. It was 71 to 65. In 1991, before these guys were even born, I think I lost the national championship game to Duke 72 to 65. So it's a lot sweeter tonight to say the least, but uh, I have nothing but great things to say about Mark Few and the Gonzaga team. They had an unbelievable year, but uh, we made some plays down the stretch. There's nobody in coaching that I have more uh, respect for than Mark. And he's a young man that I've tried to talk with. And two, we've enjoyed each other's company and watching them on tape and looking at the stat columns and how they were significantly better than us in several categories. But uh, they had a great, great run. I told the guys in the locker room uh, 2005 when Sean May was playing, uh, the team that we beat in the national championship game was 37-1. and one. And that was, in Illinois, that was Illinois. And tonight, we got Gonzaga when they were 37-1. and one. So for us, it's a fantastic feeling. Uh, at half, I was really mad because we didn't handle the clock very well at the end of the first half. And I thought we uh, weren't very intelligent. And I do think we're a smart team. Uh, and I jumped on them at the first of the half, told the staff I was going to, but I was going to try to give them something at the end. And so I tried to be a little more positive, And I told them in, at the, last year, we were ahead at halftime. And the other team came out more focused than we did, so it was our job to come out more focused than, uh, than Gonzaga. We got off to a good start, and then, you know, it goes back and forth. And with three minutes to play, we have the timeout. I think it's 3.08, but I'm not sure. And I said, if you had told us that uh, we were going to be in this situation the first day of school, meeting at my house, we would have all have taken it. And that's all Roy Williams did. I didn't do one other daggum thing, but uh, these guys made big time plays. Theo was all over the board getting loose balls. Joel made a couple of big baskets. Isaiah, my boy's been struggling like a dog. Uh, but tonight he looked like a greyhound there a couple times at the end. But I uh, told him this morning, your last high school game, you won a state championship, and he had like 34 points, 30 rebounds. I told him I would take that tonight. He didn't really give that to us, but he was big for us and made a couple of big, big baskets down the stretch. At the end, when you're watching your kids jump around and the excitement, the thrill they have, there's no better feeling in the world as a coach. Thank you. Let's take questions first for the student athletes. We'll start in the center toward the right, Pat. For Isaiah, uh, how did you avoid losing your confidence given the struggles you went through and just make yourself still be ready to make the plays at the end here? Um, you know, everybody still had, you know, faith in me. You know, everybody was always encouraging me. And, you know, I felt like, you know, I was always trying. You know, I feel like, you know, when you try, you know, good things eventually is going to happen. You know, that's all I was doing. Continuing with questions for the student athletes, let's go to the second row, Jeff. Uh, I got one for Roy, so throw it back there if you want. Okay, let's go to the row right behind in the third row. Brett Freelander, North State Journal. Uh, Joel, you've had the ankle problems, and you said that you weren't getting lift on your jumper. Did you make any adjustments tonight, or was it just 
gritting it out and making shots? Yeah, I think it was a little of just gritting it out. And, um, but I said that uh, when I came, when we were done with warm-ups, I was running to the bench and we do our regular handshakes with our coaches. And I ran by coach and he told me, uh, just use your legs. And every time I uh, took a jump shot, I just tried to use my legs. And some of them were short, but um, the ones that we needed went in, and <laughs> that's all that matters. I mean, yeah, that's all that matters. And so it was a little bit of you know myself, and then you know just my coaches and uh, my teammates helping me out. Next question is in the front row, Steve. Hi, Steve Futterman from CBS News. I want to ask the, the players, uh, Theo, Joel, Isaiah. I'm guessing Theo, you're going to change your screensaver now uh, on your computer. But could you talk about the three of you? When the moment came, when you knew you had won, when it was over and you knew you were national champions, especially after last year, what was going through your heart and mind? Can I start with Theo, then uh, Joel, and then Isaiah? Um, yeah, um, definitely going to change my screensaver on my phone now. I can do that. Um, I don't think anybody can really explain that feeling. I mean, I know I pretty much everybody that was on the floor was tearing up with, with those seven seconds left. We was just – it was so hard to keep yourself together because you knew you was that close. And uh, it, it's a feeling that you'll never forget. Um, just seeing everybody on the team just so excited that we finally, we're finally here in this moment. We, we did it. And uh, that, that's something I'll never forget. And I uh, love these guys to death. Joel. Yeah, um, when Kennedy blocked that shot and I grabbed the ball and threw it to Justin, I immediately almost started crying and then uh, we got a – Kennedy got another steal, and I went and found the ball, and I got fouled. And we were just sitting there. I don't know why, but all of a sudden, the ref came up to me and said, your coach um, wants to know if you want a timeout. And I said, yes. <laughs> and I went up to coach, and I just hugged him. I told him, I'm, I'm about to cry. And he just told me, you know what, just go up there and just knock your free throws in. And I know I missed the first one, but tried to focus in on that second one. But, I mean – it's just an unbelievable feeling, and it's what we work for. And the ups and downs that we've had, um, it's all worth it. And, I mean, I can't even describe my feeling right now, but uh, I'm just glad that I was able to do something with this team because I felt like just the personality and what we went through, and I think we just deserved it. So, Isaiah. Um, you know, once I seen Kennedy block the shot, you know, we was only up, I think, by five. You know, uh, Play was still going on. I had my hands in the air, you know, teared. I really couldn't see nothing. And next thing you know, I seen Kennedy steal it. And, you know, I, I think I almost lost it. And it's, it's just, you know, the way to go out, you know, as a senior, you know, knowing this is my last college game no matter what, you know, and, you know, it's complete 180 from last year. You know, I feel like, you know, this is where, you know, what we worked for, and, you know, it was finally here. You know, it's hard to describe it. You know, it was so surreal. And, you know, I had to pinch myself, you know, one time, you know, couldn't believe it. <laughs> In the center section, Nancy. Nancy Armour, USA Today. Isaiah, you and Kennedy both were playing with four fouls um, right here uh, for a large chunk of the, the end of the second half. How difficult was that, and how much did that affect the flow and the pace of the game for you um, guys? You know, it didn't affect nothing for me. I know when I picked up my third – I looked at coach and gave him a thumbs up, like, you know, I'm good. You know, just leave me in. <laughs> I don't know if people remember that. Like, I listened to him. <laughs> I left him in. Yeah, like, you know, I didn't – I felt like, you know, I was going to do the right things. You know, I felt like, you know, I didn't want to come out. You know, I, I, I wasn't going to, you know, miss this chance with these guys. And I felt like, you know, I, when I was out there, you know, I was doing everything I can, you know, just playing smart. In the back row on the left side? Uh, Aaron Torres, Fox Sports, I guess for Joel or, or any of you really, um, you guys obviously, it's been discussed all week, you know what it's like to be in that other locker room that Gonzaga's in right now. Late in the game, was there ever that tangible moment where you guys looked at each other verbally, non-verbally, and basically said, we're not going to let that happen again? I'm just curious because it was such a close game down the stretch, and you know obviously what it's like to be in Gonzaga's shoes right now. Let's have Joel take that and then Theo. Yeah, I think it was, I think we had like a media timeout or something, and one of our assistant coaches, uh, Coach Rob, just said, um, remember that moment and how we felt last year, and we don't want that again, so we just got to give it our all. And that's the moment where we locked in, and um, we went out there and just gave it our all, literally, and we were able to come out with the win. Do you know, do you know what, which media time I was at? I think it was like, it was like three, or five. Three, three minutes left. 
Yeah, real there's fun. three minutes left, and yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. We, we got a good answer out of Joel on yeah, that one. Yeah, Let's move on it. to the next good one up job, front Joel. on the left side. Digital Network, um, when you guys last year saw Marcus Page's shot go in with 4.7 seconds left and that emotion was going through, can you contra- compare and contrast the differences between that moment and then when you had the timeout with seven seconds left? This um, question was for I'll take it. any of the players. We okay. had five more seconds. To, well, it was no. like 4.6, wasn't it? 4. 6, 4. Hold up, hold up, hold up. First of all, you know, Marcus' shot was to tie the game. So we knew, you know, that was going to go to overtime. And, you know, with that shot, you know, felt like we had the momentum and everything. You know, this time, you know, we was up, and, you know, and Joe was at the free throw line. You know, we knew uh, at this moment we had it done. And, uh, you know, that feeling, you know, is, <laughs> is, is just something else. You know, you got it, Theo. No, Theo, he, you want to add to that? No, he covered it all. I mean, we, it was a tie game after that, and we knew we had – it would have been overtime and we would have still had to play. This time we were up. We knew if we got stops, we was going to win the game. So it was completely different. To the second row, and this will be the final question for the student athletes. <laughs> they don't took all my questions. <laughs> but this is for Joe. I'm going to try and, and wing this. Your ankles for the last couple of games. <laughs> like, you know, like, I, I just want to know. Like, I cry with one sprained ankle, and you're out here giving your all every single night with two sprained ankles. As a leader of this team, like, what does that mean to you, and what does it mean to just give that 100% regardless of whatever pain you're feeling for this team? Yeah, um, my trainers were coming up to me constantly. Are you okay? Are you okay? Uh, I need, we need to come down and do rehab. Take this up to your room. Do that. Do that. And I just kept on telling myself, look, just a couple of more weeks. Just give it, <laughs> just give it your all. And so it was times where I saw Theo going back to his room, and he like, man, I'm about to go get me a nap. And I'm like, uh, I got to go down to the pool. So, you know, it was, it was a lot of rehabbing and a lot of just um, sacrificing my time. But, um, you know, I'm, all, I'm always about team. And I didn't put myself first. Um, I put the team first. And I did whatever I could to be able to – be at 100% because, I mean, everyone would like to play at 100%, but I think the difference with me is that I have heart and I have will to do whatever I, uh, whatever it takes to be able to get out there and compete with my guys. And we said that from last year we were going to just give it our all throughout the whole season and get back to where we wanted to be. And that's what I did, and that just – throughout that whole time, the last couple of weeks, that just played throughout my head to just give it your all, fight for your team and just go out there and compete for your brothers. They're like, they're like family to me, and um, that's all I did. And I was able to put my pain, to, uh, pain aside and just think about them first. We'd like to congratulate and thank Isaiah, Joel, and Theo for joining us here in the main interview room. They're going to head back to the Carolina locker room, which is still open for student athlete availability. I know y'all gonna miss me. <laughs> I'm not. First question for head coach Roy Williams is on the right side of the aisle, Dana. Uh, Dana O'Neill with ESPN. Roy, I know they're all sweet, but because of how last year's ended, does this one feel any differently? You know, Dana, I think it does. Uh, They're all, as you said, they're all really sweet. I mean, every 351 teams start thinking that maybe we could do that. Some of them more realistic than others, but even the ones that have no chance, they think of that moment. So. They're all extremely special. I've been very, very lucky, but uh, I'd say this one is it's probably more special because it's been a journey for the last three or four years of trying to do something, trying to do something, trying to do something. The tough thing is uh, it doesn't make Marcus, Bryce, and Joel, and Joel feel any better. So that's the, that's the thing that I'm going to have for a long time. Uh, the, as I said yesterday or whenever it was, the feeling of uh, – inadequacy in the locker room last year is the worst feeling I've ever had. But yes, this one's fantastic and uh, uh, it's sweet. Yes. Oh, geez. I'm going to get another reprimand from the tournament committee because i got a daggum bottle up here that's not supposed to be here. I do have a letter in my file because I had a Coca-Cola cup in here one night. As a matter of fact, I should have kept it and said, I got the trophy. You can have the damn letter of reprimand. Coach, next question is on the right side, Jeff. 
Jeff Goodman, ESPN. Roy, you alluded to it a little bit the last three or four years, what it's been like for you. Uh, what has it been like for you, and, and what does this mean to you because of everything that you've had to go through? Well, it's, uh, you know, it's, I wish it got no attention here because this should be about the kids. I wish it got no attention, but I know it's out there. But uh, the last three or four years have been very hard, I told you. Um, uh, people have questioned my integrity, and that means more to me than anything. Uh, I know that we did nothing wrong. I know that I did nothing wrong. I've been investigated 77 times, it seems like, and everybody came to that conclusion. But there were some mistakes made at our university that I'm not happy about either. Uh, but uh, there's also, it always says, uh, uh, for little or no work, and that's not true, or that for classes that weren't classes, and that's not, they were taught differently, and whether I approve it or not, it makes no difference. But it's been there. It's been harder to recruit. Uh, we've lost about everybody that we tried because uh, the sensationalism of the newspapers. I mean, I had, I had started defending myself four years ago, and I used to say that I hoped that it was over with before I retired. Now I'm saying I hope it's over with before I die. Uh, you know, so I'm not that happy about that part of it. But your question and yesterday or whenever it was, there is nothing good about this because I didn't understand the question. There is nothing that this has caused guys to stay. I mean, it's uh, they stayed because they trusted us. They stayed because they loved the University of North Carolina. We didn't get a lot of guys that we wanted to get. But you know what? We played on the last Monday night last year, and we got beat because another team made a better play. We played on the last Monday night this year. And to me, that's a great deal of credit go to those kids because they realized they did nothing wrong. I think it was Dennis that asked the question last night. But the rules are that we were playing. Whenever the decision is made and whatever they do, everybody's got to live with. But this team that I had last year and this year's had nothing to do with that. And the things that have been put in the paper have just been very harmful and hurt, very hurtful. Uh, but that's what it is. Let's please, I'm not telling you what questions to ask. You can ask any daggum question you want, but I please would like you to try to focus on what these kids have accomplished instead of something that somebody did 24 years ago. Toward the center of the room, Nancy. Nancy Armour, USA Today. Roy, how difficult was it in terms of game flow and, and game plan with all of the fouls in the second half? Yeah, it was, a, you know, and I don't know what Mark said, but it was an ugly game. I mean, you know, I don't think either team played exceptionally well offensively. You know, the second half, they shoot 27%, and we shoot 35 for the game. So I don't think either team ever got in a real good flow. Uh, the fouls were part of it, but just the, the, the bigness, that's a terrible way to say it. My wife's an English teacher, but uh, uh, the, uh, the game is so big that you get so hyped up, you have to control your emotions and be able to play within yourself. Justin Jackson's 0 for 9 from three-point line, and he rushed so many of them. And in a normal game, he may not have done that. Uh, so I think it was the magnitude of the game uh, had a lot to do with it, and the defenses on both ends, on both teams, I think, had something to do with it. Front row all the way left. I'm just coach. happy we're not talking about a, a three-point attempt that was ruled. We touched it and went out of bounds, and then they made the three. I'm just glad we're not talking about that. Royce Bob Baum from Associated Press. What, what do you think of what Joel was able to do with the ankle problems and, again, coming off of that game he had in the semis? And, mm. and, and what has he meant to this team? You know, he's, he's, he really has a great deal of toughness. I mean, after the game Saturday, his, his knee, did, it's, it was swollen Saturday night. And our trainer said, yeah, he got a lot more puffy. So he has. He's been in the pool. He's been hot tub, cold tub. They've been massaging. They've been doing everything that they can possibly do four and five times a day. Uh, but, you know, the games are going to be played. You know, we can't get a delay and say, you know, we're not ready. Uh, you got to play. And uh, his toughness, I think everybody on our club picked up on that. I think it was important to everybody. Um, he's a shooting point guard. And, you know, tonight he was four for 13. But uh, the last three weeks since he's had the sprained ankles, he shot a terrible percentage. But he was well over 40 at one point this year. So it's limited what he does very well in the game. But he still competed, and I looked down here and six assists and one turnover and 22 points. That was an amazing game. Coach, to the right of the aisle. 
Coach Sam Paniatovich, WGN, you talked about the rhythm and the pace. When those things are sucked out because of the constant whistles, yep. uh, how do you keep your composure and how do you go about coaching when the officials do get a little too involved? Well, I, I don't know that they got too involved. You know, I was just really upset and disappointed in the one call. You know, but, but that's, that's basketball. I mean, it's a very difficult game to call. Uh, I'm sitting over there. I'm not thinking the officials are doing a terrible job. That's, I swear to goodness, that's not what I'm thinking. I'm thinking our offense stinks. I mean, I'm serious. I mean, you know, I told them, don't worry about what the referee's doing. He missed a call. Well, my God, we missed four free throws in a row. We missed layups, you know. So we were at fault just as much as anybody else. Uh, but, you know, it, it was an ugly game because two teams really wanted it badly, and the other team wasn't going to allow them to have easy things. That's what I think it was. Front and center. Kira Luck with Carolina Blue. Coach, congratulations. Thank you. Um, on Tuesday before you guys left, you said that once the game clock starts, experience goes out the window. Mm -hmm. But you have 10 players who returned from last year. Do you think at this point, it, does your stance change on that experience at all? You know, it's uh, – Joel went to the line, missed two free throws. Kennedy went to the line, missed two free throws because how mag the magnitude of the game. And we were in it last year. They shot a little bit better from free throw line than we did, and they didn't play in it last year. Um, you know, I, I do believe it when it got inside the three-minute mark and I challenged them about we've got to play right now. I think our experience, not just of last year, though, but our experience against Arkansas, our experience again, against Kentucky, our experience in the Butler game, I thought all those things really helped this team much more so than the memory of last year. And, and I wanted to give them something positive when we left the locker room, and that's the reason I told them what we were way ahead, not way ahead, but we were up five at halftime, and the other team came out and played harder and won the game. That same area, front and center? Roy, you mentioned that you uh, told the players during halftime that to remind them of the score of last year's game and to tell them to not settle. What were some of the other things you told them to sort of keep them motivated and were able to uh, come out in the second half and perform the way they did? At well, I, I spent most of my time yelling at them because I didn't like the way we finished the first half. But I think that you can do all that and that's coaching, but then try to give them something to latch on to in a positive way. And so that's the reason I gave them that. But I told them we can play a lot better. And, and I believed we could. I still believe we can play a lot better, but you have to give Gonzaga credit too. But uh, I think that gives uh, uh, halftime talks too much credit. And I'm, not, I'm just being straightforward. I've, somebody's asked me before, what did you tell them at halftime? I said I told them the same thing I told them three weeks ago when we got beat by 50 or whatever it was. But uh, I just tried to put some positive thoughts in their mind coming out to start the second half. On the right side of the room, John. John Walters, Newsweek. Hey, Coach, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, you may have answered this, but Stillman said with a three-minute timeout, you just basically told them, we're going to win this game. What's the difference in that last three minutes? What did your team do? Uh, Isaiah made, I think, I don't have a stat. I've got a stat sheet, but I don't have a play-by-play. -play. Even Things have been sort of swirling around. But I think Isaiah made two big baskets in the last three minutes. And I think that that was just a, a youngster willing the ball in the hole because he had stunk it up for the last couple of weeks most of the time. Um, you know, and then we got to, got up by three, and then we got a great stop, and then all of a sudden he goes from three to five quickly because on the steal, we let, you know, puts it down. I was mad at Justin for hanging on the rim so long. I want him to get back. And, uh, and then Kennedy comes over and wants to hug me. I said, finish it, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, it was yeah, – it really is my memory. I usually remember every play, and I'm sort of screwing it up right now. Up front to the right, Pete. Roy, Pete Thamel from Sports Illustrated. You said, I guess, on Friday that – You'd, you'd like to you'd give an honest answer on Monday about going to the White House and uh, you know going to see President Trump if yeah. you want. Now that now that you're here, I'm just kind of curious. Uh, yeah. you can't jinx yourself. So what your thoughts are? I haven't had any. You know, I probably screwed it up. I should have told you. Let me think about it afterwards because I wasn't going to jinx myself. Um, you know, we won it in '05. We never got invited. You know, so I don't know if we're going to get invited this time. I mean, th that's a bad way to put it. They invited us in September when they were doing a lot of teams. Well, all of my team were already at the NBA training camp, three, two of them in Europe. So we didn't go in 05, and we did go in 09. But, uh, you know, the uh, office of the presidency of the United States is the fa most fantastic place you can be. Uh, but uh, let me think on it. You know, I, and again, I don't know if we're going to get invited. I really don't. Uh, but uh, I know one thing. We're putting up a nice banner in the Smith Center that's hard to get. Back to Nancy in the center. 
Or speaking of uh, Dean, you were asked about this outside, but you now have one more title than he does. You've got three since 2005. I know you're not big on legacy, but what what do you think this does do for you? You know, Nancy, it's uh, Jimmy told me yesterday he was going to ask me that question. I almost got emotional. Uh, I really, uh, I don't think Roy Williams should ever be put in the same sentence with Dean Smith. I really don't. I think Coach was the best there's ever been on the court, and he was even a better person. And uh, so it's a little staggering. Uh, when I look up at this, uh, one of the boards tonight and it saw those guys, uh, you know, they had more titles than our North Carolina teams had it, not Roy Williams because I don't like it that way. But uh, that was uh, a little emotional for a second. But I really uh, – I don't know what to say. I mean, because I just, uh, I'm very, very lucky. I'm doing what I've always wanted to do is to coach kids and trying to get them to have a common goal and make sacrifices. And uh, um, it's number three, but they've all been fantastic and uh, I've been very fortunate. Final question for Coach Williams in the back of the room on the aisle, Ralph. <sighs> Roy, you had talked about so much about your. Thank you. I just couldn't find you. Ralph Russo, the Associated Press. You had talked so much about your relationship with Coach Few. You've had a lot of these, been on the other end of some of these, especially last year. I, I know it's tough after the game to really say much, but did you say anything to him? Share a moment that maybe you could share with us. You know, he's uh, he is a, good, a really good friend. I mean, uh, one of the funniest looks I've ever seen was. Uh, uh, we have a private plane, and I've given him a ride, and we go from Vegas to Orlando to see another recruit, and the door seal uh, has a leak, and it starts whistling, the most shrill, uncomfortable feeling you've ever seen. And he's sitting there like this, his hands in his ears saying, why did I follow Roy Williams in this plane? <laughs> but we got it okay in the whole bit. But we've had some good times together, and it uh, I've coached against Jared Haas, and I've coached against Dean Smith. I've coached against Mark Turgeon. I almost never saw Mark during a game tonight because I don't focus on the other coach. But as I started to walk down there, I mean, we're jumping around, and I realized that I hadn't shook his hand. And I started down there, and it was the same kind of feeling I had when I coached against those guys that I've either coached or been my assistant. And I told him I was sorry that it had to be against you. I know how you feel. And uh, – it was, it was almost emotional because I do respect the youngster so, so much. And he calls me his mentor and, uh, or one of his mentors, and that's a pretty damn neat thing. We'd like to congratulate Coach Williams and thank Coach for joining us here in the main interview room tonight and all week long. Thank you. Coach, can you do one more picture with the trophy? Can you put the hat on? Locker room closed. Kirsch.